Hey guys, it's Melanie and welcome to another anti-haul. Today we are doing a Sephora anti-haul. I do plan on doing a Ulta version as well at a later point this month. So um, stay tuned for that if you're curious. Um, today we are going to be focusing on some things that I have kind of been looking into for the last like month or so. Um, some of these things are items that I was actually tempted by but talked myself out of. Um, and some of these things I just, for whatever reason, whether I've heard kind of not so great reviews or I have gone and tested the products myself in store. Um, they're just items that I just don't think are worth investing in right now. Um, disclaimer, just because I don't think they're worth investing in doesn't mean that I don't think you should. If you are excited about some of these products or you have them and you love them, I don't mean any offense by this. So this is just one person's opinion. Um, I will go ahead and link all these things down below for you. So if you want to personally go read up a little bit more about them, you can do that. Um, I'm going to get started with this thing right here. This might come as a little bit of a shock to you guys, but um, yes, the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette is going on my no buy list. There's a couple of reasons for this. First, um, I do have the first three naked palettes. Um, and I have to admit that I don't reach for them regularly. The formulation with Urban Decay, when their shadows are good, they are usually very good. But there are some hit and miss shadows in these naked palettes for me. And I just don't think that I can purchase another one for... $54 that I may, you know, love like four or five of the shades in the palette and use them regularly, but the other, you know, however many shallot, um, shadows just sit. I just can't justify it. Also, these are obviously, these are described as amber-hued neutrals, so they are warmer shades, and personally, my preference is it leans towards cooler shades. Um, I will use warm shades from time to time, but um, you know, for me, I prefer cooler tone shades. And then also, when I first saw this, it really just kind of reminded me of my Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. And quite truthfully, I love that Modern Renaissance palette. Every single shadow in there has an amazing formulation. And while I don't regularly use all of the like warm shades that are contained within that. Um, I know that when I do use them that they are amazing quality. Um, a lot of the shades like I said are very similar. I just don't see the per like the point in me having a bunch of like palettes that have a ton of warm shades in them when I just don't reach for that regularly enough if that makes sense. So because of that the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette and really anything else that came out in this whole Naked Heat collection are just a no-go for me. I prefer my cooler tone shades, more, you know, cool tone neutrals <laughs> over warm tone neutrals. So there you have it. Let's ignore this because this is on my I want to desperately buy this list. <laughs> it's the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Sleeping Mask. Dying to get my hands on that after my friend Susan told me about it but apparently it's always out of stock. So anyway, I have it over in my loves. All right, let's move over to something from Drunk Elephant. Might come as a shock because you guys know I love my Drunk Elephant products. I think they are an amazing skincare line. Um, the reason that the Best Jelly Cleanser, or I don't know if it's supposed to be Besta, but Best Jelly Cleanser is on my no buy list is because it's kind of expensive. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I have used the Kate Somerville Exfoliate Cleanser, which is in the same price range as this Drunk Elephant Jelly Cleanser. It's $34. But um, I do go through 
cleansers fairly quickly. I just, I feel like this might be a little bit overpriced. Also, the reviews on it aren't super great. It does say that it's great at removing all traces of makeup, excess oil, pollution, and any other grime without leaving any residue. Um, but I've also read that it can actually be a little bit over drying and that's not something that I want for my skin. As oily as my skin is, I'm very careful to use cleansers that don't strip every single ounce of oil from my skin because that just sends my skin into like oil production overdrive. So I have to be careful with my cleansers and I have heard that this one is a little bit more stripping. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass on this one, but if it does come, say there's like a holiday set that comes out with a little sample size of this, I would probably end up using the sample, but um, I'm not gonna go out of my way to purchase the five ounce cleanser for $34. Also, I have a lot of other cleansers that I need to use up. Quite frankly, I have a lot of skincare I need to use up. Okay, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Blush Trios. So these are new. Um, the reason that these are on my no-go list is mostly because I don't like the combinations that they have. <laughs> I kind of wish that they were sold as singles. Um, maybe if they were sold as singles in like the $15 range, like in the sizes that you see here, I would probably try one. Um, but it's $30 for a trio. There is three grams of product. So you're, you're getting three different colors and a fair amount of blush for $30. They're not a terrible deal. However, I just, like I said, I don't like these color combinations. Like, I really like this peachy one, but I just would not wear this cantaloupe shade here. I would probably wear these two, but if I would never wear that, like, I just... I don't want that blush just sitting there. Um, I do that a lot when I buy blush palettes. Oftentimes I will like one or two of the shades and I use those and I use them to death and then the rest of the shades just sit there and I'm trying to get away from doing that. Um, this pink one was really pretty too but honestly I wouldn't wear this shade right here and it's probably doubtful that I would wear this one for most of my life because it's very bright um, and you guys know that I do more of a neutral look every single day. Same with this one, wouldn't wear the lavender shade, wouldn't wear this brownie shade in here. There, none of these sets contain three colors that I would wear on any kind of like regular basis. So maybe if they come out with singles I'd be more apt to try them. Um, the reviews are decent so far. Um, I mean, there's almost five stars, so I don't doubt that it's good quality. I just don't like the selections of the colors, so. I've had people ask me if I'm going to be trying the Becca Soft Light Blurring Setting Powder because I really do like the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydro Powder, and um, I also really like the Laura Geller Filter Fix. Um, I'm not going to be trying this one because I'm quite happy with the other two products that I just mentioned. They're fantastic for me. So I don't need to spend $38 on another setting powder. It's going to take me a while to get through the other two. So no need to add any more loose powder to that collection. The Becca Light Chaser Highlighters. Okay, uh, admittedly I am not a... Um, I'm not a highlighter person to begin with. I know a lot of you are, and these do look beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I have had, um, like, moments of, oh, that would be a really pretty eyeshadow right there. Oh, that would be really pretty on my lid as well. Or, eek, God, that's so beautiful. I just want to put it on my lid. <laughs> but I'm not spending $34 on a highlighter that I might reach for a couple times a month to pop onto my eyelids. I have done that a couple times this year already where I have purchased either a single highlighter or highlighter palettes because I've just thought, okay, I'm not gonna put this on my cheekbones, I'm not gonna put it down the bridge of my nose, it's just too much for me and my enlarged pores, but I wanna put it on my eyelid. That's silly. I have a lot of shades that are very similar to this. No, they're probably not the formulation of the Becca highlighters, but that's okay. If I apply them with a damp shadow brush, I can get a very similar look. So I just don't need this. They're beautiful, but I, I talked myself out of these, thankfully. But if you are a highlighter person, I know that the Becca highlighters are really nice. I have Moonstone and Opal myself, and I think they're gorgeous. So... 
I have some more milk products <laughs> in this anti-haul. Um, I don't really have anything against this brand, but, um, you know, there, my friend Stephanie got a lip, uh, lip balm or lip glitter or whatever it is from them. I don't, I don't know what it is. I will link her video down below where she shows that in her most recent haul. Go check it out. She says it's gorgeous. So it would be open to trying that. But the thing, the reason that I put these two items here, which is the Milk Makeup Matcha Toner and the Milk Makeup Matcha Cleanser, is that I don't like this stick packaging that is showing up so frequently. So this is a solid toner that is meant to purify the pores and smooth and hydrate the skin. I just don't like this because you are applying it to your face over and over again. And yes, you should ideally be applying these products to a freshly cleansed face, but it still just kind of weirds me out to like rub the same thing on my face over and over again, even if my face is clean. I am a germ freak when it comes to like my face and I just don't like like, I will wash my hands twice before putting on any of my skincare. Like, I I just am weird about it. And it's probably because when I was younger, like, I used to break out quite frequently when I was a teenager. And a lot of that probably had to do with the fact that, you know, I may have used some clear cell and some clean and clear, but I probably wasn't applying that stuff with the cleanest hands, you know. Um, and that was just because I was 12 and didn't know any better. I know better now. I've become a little bit of a germaphobe and stuff like that. Just, this just kind of freaks me out. Not saying that they're bad products. In fact, you know, the reviews are decent. This one gets four out of five stars. Let's see what the other one gets. Um, this one gets like four and a half stars. So, you know, it's, it's, it seems like a decent product, a sulfate free, soap free matcha cleanser that purifies, exfoliates and targets redness. That might be really great. But it's also $26 for an ounce. It's kind of spendy. I don't know. I just, I just don't love the packaging of this. And I would think it would get kind of gooey or like gross after time because I mean, especially with the cleanser, but I don't know. If you have used this, please let me know about your experience because I'm curious. Okay. This, I guess, is kind of irrelevant because it's out of stock, but I know a lot of people are talking about these NARS liquid blushes right now, which, by the way, I just found out that, unfortunately, I think NARS is going to be start, starting to sell in China. Um, my friend Susan notified me that there was talk about this, so I haven't, like, looked into it a whole lot myself. Um, quite honestly, I'm a little bit behind on a lot of makeup news because it's summertime and I'm busy, but... Um, yeah, so that would be a major bummer. But besides that, I just don't do liquid blush. <laughs> um, I've seen several people who have oily skin say that they use this and that it works really well for them. But I've never had any luck with any kind of liquid or um, uh, liquid or cream blush type products on my skin. They just melt and like slide off my face. Um, I also wear powder foundation, so it makes using a product like this a little bit more difficult because I don't have a liquid foundation to blend this into. Um, I don't think it would sit properly on top of my um, powder foundation, so that's a no-go. Plus, there's like only three colors. Um, I'm surprised they wouldn't come out with any more, and looks like they are sold out as all heck with the exception of the orgasm which is everybody's favorite NARS blush right okay another Becca thing I tucked myself out of are these liquid crystal glow glosses they they look very pretty but I am not a shimmer or glitter lip kind of person um I do love my glosses but I love my buxom glosses and I think the buxom glosses are gorgeous these were kind of tempting, but talked myself out of them. I have plenty of lip gloss <laughs> that I need to get through. Honestly, I probably have quite a bit of lip gloss that I need to toss at this point because I've had it forever and I just, I never finished it. So I'm trying to slow my roll on the lip gloss purchasing because I need to try to use up more of what I have at this point. So I talked myself out of these, but these do look very pretty. And if you do like shimmery lips, um, 
they're they're definitely pretty and they come in some really beautiful like iridescent fun um multi-dimensional colors so this jade one is the one that appealed the most to me so it has a golden opal pearl with a teal sapphire shift i just thought that sounded really pretty but i'm not gonna do it not gonna do it okay i have a couple items here from pretty vulgar and most of the reason why I put these in here is that uh, these are not actually sold in store, at least not at my Ulta, so I can't test them. It's pretty hard for me to justify purchasing anything from a brand that is new and that is kind of spendy um, when I haven't even had a chance to like test the stuff in store. So this is just not something that I can make a commitment to. Um, and the packaging, while I think it appeals to a lot of people, it doesn't actually really appeal to me. Like it's very, it looks very um, ornate, which is fine, but I, I just don't necessarily need all this. And if this is why they are charging $26 for a single blush, like I would rather have more plain packaging and have the blush be more in the 20 to $22 price range. Um, and these colors didn't really suck me in either. The pink mauve kind of did, but the rest of them, they do seem to have some shimmer in them. And I'm not, um, I'm not a shimmery blush kind of person. So I just, I just can't justify ordering something like this and then potentially having to like deal with the return. Not into it. And these eyeshadow palettes, um, the neutral one that they have actually looks very pretty and again my friend Stephanie has it and she says it's definitely worthwhile but like these colorful ones I just don't do bright shades like this and I don't like it when palettes have this cutesy packaging I used to love that in the past but I'm more about practicality now like I would like everything laid out a little bit more like this row here versus like this oddly shaped shadow over here or you know this triangle here and then these being like different sizes like I just I guess I just prefer more streamlined <laughs> packaging in my old age of 38 um but I do know that a lot of you guys really do like this brand it's just for me it's just hard to justify not having been able to like play with it in store yet to you know spend $35 on a palette that is way more cutesy than I would like it to be. But these are getting good reviews, so let me know if you've tried any of the pretty vulgar stuff. All right, this one. Um, okay, first off, this looks so similar to me to the Jaclyn Hill collaboration that came out last year. Um, if you already have that, I don't know that you would need this. I don't need this because these are just a bunch of like shimmer, things <laughs> that are just going to accentuate the pores on my face. I try to be so careful with that, especially on my cheeks. And this just is a shimmer fest here. The blush has shimmer in it. The two highlighters, I'm assuming these are two highlighters, seem to have shimmer in it. And I believe that this has some shimmer, the bronzer or other blush here, whatever this is, um, also has more shimmer in it. I'm not... I'm not against Chrissy Teigen. I honestly don't know very much about her. I know who she's married to, and I know that she is a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model, but that's really all that I know about her. So this doesn't suck me in from, like, the celebrity factor, and it's $46, and it's just more stuff that I would just have a hard time wearing on my skin in particular. Um, so there's that. I will say packaging is pretty, um, simple. It seems compact, straightforward, would probably be great for traveling if you like stuff like this. Um, but again, it's $46 and I just, the highlighters that I have work fine for me. I just, I just, I love my hourglass blushes. Um, I love my hourglass highlighters the most and, um, I'm hoping that Hourglass comes out with a great holiday package this year because that is just, that, that seems to be like an, a given for me. Whenever Hourglass comes out with anything, I'm immediately like, oh yes. <laughs> but with the Becca stuff, it's a little bit more like, oh, they use a lot more shimmer 
than Hourglass does. I feel like Hourglass looks more natural on me personally with my aging skin. So there you have it. Um, and then um, the last couple things. This I just thought I'd toss in here because this was actually on my VIB wish list for the Sephora sale this last uh, April. I saw it in person and it looks nothing. It looks nothing like this picture here. Here I thought these were all beautiful mauves. No, they're really not. <laughs> these two shades here are actually very like brown, warm. So for that reason, the White Russian went from my wish list to my anti-haul because if it, if it looked like this, I would have bought it. It does not look like that in real person. I would encourage you to take a look online and then go in store and compare. It looks like two completely different palettes. I love the formulation and in fact I just bought these Suede Seductions Buxom eyeshadow palette. I have that on my eyes right now. Oh, I love these palettes. They're gorgeous. The formula is amazing. But this color selection just was not what I thought it was. Um, and one of my subscribers actually told me that. So anyway. This was another thing I thought I'd go ahead and pop in here. I actually haven't heard very many people talk about these. I feel like this was kind of one of those releases from Urban Decay that just kind of got lost um, because everybody is cranking out so much stuff. So much stuff is coming out. It's so overwhelming, you guys. So the Shapeshifter palettes, I actually played with these in store. I didn't think they were that great. These are available at Ulta as well, which is where I played with them. Um, I don't use cream products to start with and I'm darn sure not going to buy a palette that has like a lot of cream products in it. I might have liked a couple of the powder shades but this was just not worth it to me for $45. Seems like there's a good amount of product and it's available in a medium and um, well light medium shift and then also a medium dark shift. So hmm. I guess it's a neat idea. It's just not for me. Again, it's just a personal preference thing on my end. And that was it. That is everything. This video was so long. Thank you guys for staying tuned <laughs> throughout all of my rambling. Again, I'll link this stuff down below for you guys just in case you do want to go check it out. I mean, some of these things might totally appeal to you. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on any of these things. And I'm dying to get my hands on this. Have you guys, oh, have you guys heard about this? It sounds gorgeous. I just need it to come in stock. So anyway, haven't tried anything from Glow Recipe yet, but excited to get my hands on that. Anyway, let me know if you guys have any questions. Hope you're having a great day. I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.